Hi there, let's prove that big O is additive. So what that means is that we've got some function, uh, we'll call it f, and it's big O of h, which is another function. We've also got some other function, g, that is also big O of h. And we wanna, we wanna prove that f and g, or f, I mean f plus g, is still big O of H. Now we're going to do this. Uh, this is going to be very similar to a previous video on transitivity. I'll go ahead and link to that in the description. And we're just going to really piggyback off of the definition of big O. So f of n, we're going to be less than or equal to some constant times h of n. and probably sick of me writing this by now, but you know, c's, uh, oops, greater than zero. Guess I can't write it too many times. <laughs> um, and then uh, we've got kind of our minimum input size greater than or equal to zero, and then all n are gonna be greater than or equal to that n naught. Then we've also got g of n less than or equal to, again, we're going to use C prime because we don't know if these are the same or different, but it's just a constant anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Times H of n, C naught prime greater than zero, then again, N naught prime greater than or equal to zero. These guys might be the same, they might not be, it does not matter. And then finish up that boilerplate. <laughs> and now we're going to say it follows. This one's honestly a little more a little more clear than the transitivity proof because this is a little more straightforward just algebra. So we're gonna just add our functions together and then we're gonna add our upper bounds together. So c times h of n plus c prime h of n. And then we can just kind of conclude, you know, f of n plus g of n are big O of h because we can factor out the h of n and we just get this. A constant plus some other potentially the same constant times h of n, which is still big O h of n, and that's for all n greater than or equal to the max of uh, our n naught and our n naught prime.